My name is Casey Gibson. I graduated from Mines in 2022 with my master's degree in humanitarian engineering with a focus in environmental engineering. And I currently work as an associate program officer at the U.S. National Academy of Engineering here in D.C. As an associate program officer, um, I work on the program side. So the National Academies, there's the three academies of uh, sciences, engineering and medicine. We're like a big umbrella. And there's the membership side. That is where you know somebody pretty advanced in their career who does something really amazing, uh, they could get elected to the academies and become a member. So I don't work in, in that area, but we on the program side, uh, what we do is provide um, guidance to the nation uh, on matters related to engineering and science and technology policy. So we try to tap into the nationwide and even international expertise, uh, not only our members, but volunteers and academics, professionals, um, even community organizations around the country and world and, and try to convene those experts to guide us and, and give us advice on a particular topic of interest either to the federal government or sometimes we have sponsors from um, uh, philanthropy, foundations or uh, private uh, sponsors as well sometimes. So we just try to provide scientific and engineering advice. The humanitarian engineering program prepared me so well for this job that I'm in now. Um, specifically, I work on programs related to cultural, ethical, social, and environmental responsibility in engineering. Uh, the acronym is CESER, C-E-S-E-R, uh, the CESER program. So I'm helping develop and get that program off the ground here. Um, so it's directly related to everything we learned in humanitarian engineering, including you know, the authors that we read in class, the the minds that we sort of were reading about and thinking about, those are some of the same people that we're bringing in now to serve on our committees and, and contribute to reports and workshops and be speakers at our events and things like that. So having that network from minds and just having um, the awareness of this area of engineering that is so rich and it's... Um, you know, not a maybe mainstream area of technical engineering, but uh, it's so important. And, and I didn't know that there was so much going on in this area before I went to Mines and before I did the HE program. So it was really exciting to learn that this was a viable career path. Yeah, there, there's so many exciting parts. Um, being in DC, and being sort of in the policy world, um, you meet some very interesting, just very intelligent people and getting to pick their brains and listen to them talk and and engage with those kinds of people has been really fun and really cool. Um, and I really like the freedom that we have here to sort of guide the direction of our programming. Um, so, you know, we go out, we look for the support and the funding and we make the proposals. You know, we have this idea. Maybe it sounds kind of crazy to somebody, but somebody else is like, no, I agree with that principle. I want to put money behind it. I support you to do a study on this. And then we can use the platform of the academies to get the message out really far and wide. So having that autonomy has been really nice and exciting. Um, just one example, we are doing a collaboration with Within the academies, we have a committee, uh, a committee on human rights, and so they are. It's composed of members who do advocacy work worldwide for engineers and scientists who, um, for instance, may face persecution for their scientific and engineering work, things like that. Human rights abuses related to engineering and science, um, and so we at NAE are collaborating with them to do a fall workshop on engineering and human rights for the first time which is a field that um, has overlap with engineering ethics and social justice and things like that. But it is its own distinct sort of framework and approach to engineering that's just now starting to be explored. So that's one initiative that um, I've been able to help get started and uh, see through. So just uh, 
yeah, it, it's exciting to be able to explore ideas like that. Minds is a really great place. Shout out to the engineering design and society department because they are doing really cool work on uh, socio-technical integration and having the perspective that, you know, the social and the technical aren't separate. You know, you have to, throughout your entire engineering education and practice and career, understand that these are inextricable things. You know, what we do as engineers results from society and what we do also impacts society and there are cultural influences that go into you know what is funded why it is funded why you are you know paid to do the work that you're doing and what the resulting impacts are going to be so i think creating a new generation of engineers that have more consciousness around that is really cool and i think it's something that has a lot of um, momentum right now and minds is really like spearheading that in engineering education, um, which has been cool to see. I think, of course, I had reservations about, you know, uh, what's a nine to five going to be like having been a student basically my whole life. But um, from experience, you know, if you can get through school, you can get through a nine to five. At least in my position, I'm able to have a pretty decent work-life balance where, you know, I go to the office uh, hybrid twice a week, work from home three times a week, and I do my stuff during my hours. And then when I'm not there, you know, I'm not thinking about it. I get to have, you know, my own hobbies and interests on the side that were difficult to pursue at the same time as being a student. So getting back to that's been really refreshing. I would just encourage students, if it at all sounds interesting, to look into science and engineering policy because it's a world I hadn't really thought about much before applying and getting this job. Um, But, you know, if you think about it, you're there as an undergrad or a grad, maybe you have an NSF grant that's funding you. There is somebody behind the scenes at NSF who, you know, is developing that program, that portfolio saying like, we need to fill these research gaps in X, Y, and Z area. These are the most critical areas. We're going to allot these funds to it. And then we're going to give them to these researchers based on these proposals. So somebody out there, many people out there out reading the proposals, like really steering the direction of where research in this country is going. Um, And you could be one of those people if that sounds interesting to you. And it's a cool job for somebody who's maybe um, has that kind of generalist mentality where you're like, I like learning uh, about a lot of different areas and you can sort of be adaptable. So like I am, even though I study humanitarian, environmental, agricultural engineering, I do projects related to all sorts of things, Um, AI, energy security, um, the, you know, lithium ion battery life cycles, offshore wind energy, sort of just all over the place. And you get to have the chance to learn a lot about a lot of different areas very quickly and then talk to experts in those fields. And um, yeah, really feel like you can influence the direction of, of science and engineering. I would just say congratulations for making it through and and getting to graduation because it is not easy. A lot of sleepless nights and and all of that. And um, just like a last bit of advice from my own career path is sort of I have kept uh, pursuing seemingly disparate interests. Like uh, from my undergrad side, I did a bit of study abroad and I pursued Spanish and I pursued all these humanities electives and stuff that my engineering advisors at times were like, why are you doing that? Um, But then it all ended up coming together into this niche um, research program that I was hired on at Mines to do uh, responsible mining work in Colombia and then that transitioning to this job in a very niche area. So um, it's good to have, you know, a broad skill set that can be a- appealing to a-, a wide variety of employers. But if you're more of a-, a specialist or more of a niche kind of expertise, that's OK, too. And there's somebody 
who will hire you to do it more than likely. 